Let's have a quick look at how we can use Snowflake to unnest JSON and then use dbt to unnest that JSON more dynamically than we can do using uh, regular SQL. So here we have a table called carts and that table has a column called carts JSON and it also has some metadata columns which is from my copy into command which gives me the file name as it was on S3, the row number for that file and the time that I copied that file into Snowflake. If we just look at the data here, um, so we can make this bigger, I think. Yep. Um, so each cart contains um, a list of products. So this would be the first product in the cart. This is the second product in um, that cart ID of number one. And cart ID number two is down here. So that's what our data looks like. Um, Let's go ahead and run this query. So this is basically like, if you think in other programming uh, languages, we have like dict.keys. Um, so let's have a look at what I'm doing. So I'm gonna select, um, actually, let's look at the from clause first. So I mentioned the table name. I say lateral flatten and the name of the JSON column name. And then I alias this entire from clause, including the lateral flatten as json so i could say as anything here i could say as jeff um right and then here i would say jeff.key um so that's basically just an alias and this will give me a distinct list of keys found across um, that entire um carts json column in the carts table so now this gives me something that i can loop over and by the way, we, we're gonna generally abstract this later where it's just the two parameters that you have to dub in our JSON table and JSON column. Cool. So here's an example of how I can use Snowflake to just select the data in one of those quote unquote JSON columns. So I'm, I guess, indexing in to the discounted total field from the original carts JSON column from the carts zero one table. Um, so now that's giving me all of the data in that field. And if I wanted to do um, another field here, now I have two fields. But you could see the problem is if I had a lot of columns, like, oopsie daisy, what happened here? Pause. Okay, I was running the abstracted one. The problem is if I had more than a handful of columns, if I had like 50 columns, I would not want to type all of this junk out manually. So that's that's one problem. Um, also, I do want to mention here that these are coming through as variant data types still, even though I've selected just the one column. Snowflake is not going to automatically like guess how you want to cast this. So I would suggest here that you would say, you could say numeric. And total, you can also say numeric. Okay, so now I have, um, I'm starting to build out columns with the right data type. And you can see Snowflake is inferring that that's technically under the hood. That's called the fixed decimal data type. Um, if I were to loop over all of those, I would get a query that looks like this. Um, and then I can use the rename keyword because I wanted to rename ID as carts ID for this particular like schema that or star schema that I'm building. I want the, every table is going to have a table called ID. Um, so I just want to really say that this is the carts ID. Um, and then, so you could see what happened here is that since each cart contains multiple products, my JSON has only unnested one level. So then I would now need to do the same process and create a table called carts underscore products. So it's the products within the carts. And then I would unnest this using the exact same approach. Um, so that's the manual way. Let's just have a look at how we can use a dbt macro to solve some of this, these problems here. Uh, let's take a look. Macros, unnest JSON. Okay. So... Here's that abstracted SQL that we looked at before. So I'm going to set a, a variable, a Jinja variable called JSON column query. And that query, this variable is just gonna be SQL text, unexecuted SQL text. And it's exactly what we've already looked at where we're dubbing in table and column name. 
And for my particular requirement, I needed to do some filtering because I had one single table um, that had like cards data, product data, user data, all in one variant column. So I was needed to filter on file name for my requirement, but this is custom Jeff only stuff here. Um, then, um, then we need to run that query. So we just basically are templating some text here. Now we're going to execute that text against the database and it's going to return some object back to DBT that we can then use to literally turn into a list. So we basically say results list equals uh, the results from actually our query execution. We're going to look at the first column within those results and get the values and turn those values into a list that we can loop over. So literally that is just this list. So I'm storing these seven things into a list that I can now iterate over. So I can say for each one of those in the list, do this text templating, okay? Um, so that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna say select star from the table because I wanna get the original data that was there. I want the original JSON blob in case I ever need to tie back. I want all my timestamps, my metadata from S3. Um, so after I'm done selecting star from the original table, I'm going to give a comma and I'm going to say for column name in results list, do what we did in the, in the previous hard coded example. Give me the JSON column with a colon and then the column name from the loop. And we're going to say as, and we're going to name it itself. And if it's not the last time through the loop, I need a comma. So we do it again and, and then uh, so we're from the JSON table, and this is the custom Jeff only stuff. So actually using this macro in a model, the next thing that we're going to do is just look at how to use it. I call the macro. I pass in the name of the table and the name of the column. And you can see, since I've had to do this for so many objects here, I've even abstracted that a little bit. So JSON table, I'm setting a variable up front, which is going to be carts01. The JSON column is JSON carts. So when I call the unnest JSON macro, it's going to pass in carts01 and JSON carts. And then I'm doing select star, renaming ID as carts ID, as I already explained. And let's run this bad boy. And uh, hold on, let me pause. Okay, I was having a little panic attack that it didn't actually work, but but it did work. It was just the um, the text was so long that it was taking up so much space on my screen and the scroll bars in this UI are like non-existent almost. Um, but, but there it is. So I have my file name, my file row number copied at and my unnested JSON with my one column, which happens to be a nested column, which was products and Jesus, there's my total and that's it. So yeah, this UI is a little bit, a little bit bad for, um, previewing this data. Um, but that's how it works. So I don't need to spell out column names. So if there's 50 columns here, boom, I'm just calling unnest JSON. And if I want to rename something from the result, I can rename it. Okay, I hope that helps.